This video demonstrates the installation and setup of the EtherHall point-to-point -point gigabit Ethernet radio link, first with a 1 foot or 31 centimeter antenna, and then with a 2 feet, that is 65 centimeter antenna. Here are the tools needed for the installation. A 13 millimeter or half an inch open end wrench is used to mount the bracket, and a standard digital voltmeter is used to align the antenna. The mounting bracket is packed in a separate box. Unpack it and assemble as follows. In order to allow for the antenna to move freely during alignment, unlock both the azimuth and the elevation lock bolts. Install the mounting bracket onto a fixed reinforced steel mounting pole 2 to 4 inches in diameter. As part of the site survey, a clear line of sight will have been verified to the remote outdoor unit or ODU. Align the mounting bracket so that it points in the direction of this remote ODU. Confirm that the azimuth and elevation adjustment lock bolts are unlocked to allow free movement during alignment. Center the azimuth and elevation adjustment lock bolts at the middle of the scale. Depending on the specific ether hole radio being installed, the outdoor unit and antenna may arrive pre-assembled in a single box. In this case, please follow the instructions in step 3A. Alternatively, the outdoor unit and antenna may arrive in separate boxes, in which case they must be assembled together on site. This is demonstrated in step 3b. Unpack the ODU and its accessories. Carefully remove the ODU from its protective plastic bag. The antenna radium is treated with hydrophobic coating designed to repel raindrops. Use special care to avoid damaging or scratching this coating. Let's start by opening the box containing the outdoor unit. In addition to the outdoor unit itself, the box contains several accessories, including a set of protective all-weather shells that fit over cables from 3.5 to 9 mm in diameter, a grounding cable, and a DC connector for use in those cases where a DC power supply is required. Carefully take out the outdoor unit and place it on a clean, unobstructed work surface and remove the plastic cap protecting the waveguide interface. Take the antenna out of its box. You'll notice a plastic cover protecting the antenna's radon. Leave this cover on for the time being in order to protect the radon during the assembly and the installation steps. You will need to remove it only after powering up the outdoor unit prior to aligning the antenna. Note that this antenna is suitable only for an outdoor unit with a threaded adapter. Outdoor units with a smooth adapter cannot be used with this particular antenna. Notice also the guiding hole on the threaded adapter. We will come back to this hole shortly. Remove the plastic cap protecting the antenna waveguide or feeder. And notice the guiding pin next to the feeder. Now place the antenna on top of the outdoor unit so that the guiding pin is aligned with the guiding hole on the outdoor unit. You will feel the antenna drop into place when the alignment is perfect. Turn the ring clockwise, securing the antenna to the outdoor unit, and tighten by hand. Use any medium screwdriver to tighten the ring firmly as shown. Any 5mm or 0.2 inch driver will do the trick. 
Use the four hex bolts supplied to attach the plate to the outdoor unit using a 7mm hex socket tool. The assembled outdoor unit and antenna can now be installed using the one foot mounting bracket followed by the antenna lining procedure. Remember to remove the radon protection before the alignment. The link polarization is clearly marked with V and H for vertical and horizontal respectively. By default, the ODU is delivered ready for installation in the vertical polarization. If necessary, change the polarization by rotating the plate so the arrow points at the engraved letter H. To this end, use a 7mm hex socket driver. Mount the ODU onto the bracket using the quick release hooks and slide it firmly inwards. The azimuth and elevation lock bolts should not be tightened too firmly, allowing for free movement during the alignment process. At this point, the ODU should be pointing roughly in the direction of the remote ODU. Perform a line of sight visual check to confirm this. Use the port designated PWR to connect the ODU to a DC power supply in the range of 36 to 57 volts. The port designated AUX includes sockets for digital voltmeter probes used during the alignment process, as well as a reset push button. Two or four active Ethernet interfaces are available depending on the hardware configuration of the ODU. These may be either electrical, RJ45, or optical SFPs. The ODU must be grounded using a copper cable of at least 16 American wire gauge and in accordance with local electrical code. All cables connected to the ODU should be outdoor graded with UV protection. Category 5E or 6 Ethernet cables must be shielded and terminated using metallic RJ45 connectors. Three sets of protective all-weather shells are provided in each ODU box. These fit cables from 3.5 to 9mm in diameter. Connect the Ethernet cable to port RJ1 of the ODU. Select a rubber gasket that best fits the cable diameter. Note that the rubber gasket is spliced and can be assembled on cables with connectors. Secure the old weather shells by hand only. Do not use tools. Power up the ODU by connecting the Ethernet cable to the data and power output port of a power over Ethernet device. The power LED illuminates red and then blinks green until the ODU has fully booted, a process that lasts approximately 90 seconds. Insert the digital voltmeter probes into the ODU port designated AUX in order to switch the ODU into alignment mode. This is indicated by the RF LED illuminating orange. Before proceeding, ensure that the far end ODU is also in alignment mode. Read the Receive Signal Strength indication or RSSI using the voltmeter set to measure DC voltage. The voltage reading will be between 0 and 1, indicating the RSSI in DBM. For example, a voltage reading of 0.45 is equivalent to an RSSI of minus 45 dBm. Ensure that the elevation tension band is connected to the tension pin. To align the antenna, sweep over both azimuth and elevation such that the antenna's main lobe is pointing at the remote ODU. The azimuth and elevation are adjusted by using the fine adjustment bolts. The objective is reached when the RSSI is within plus or minus 4 dB of the pre-calculated value. When done, tighten and lock the azimuth adjustment lock bolts. The ODU might tilt slightly, in which case readjust the elevation to the optimal position and lock the elevation adjustment lock bolts. Use the voltmeter to verify that the RSSI has not changed after locking all the bolts. Once the antennas are aligned and locked, disconnect the voltmeter and reboot both local and far end ODUs by pressing the respective reset buttons. The ODUs will revert back to the adaptive mode, which is the default operational mode.
The RF LEDs on both ODUs should illuminate green, indicating the link is up. The radio link can now pass traffic in management between all ports and over the radio. For further radio link configuration, connect to the ODU using the web EMS. A DC connector is shipped with each ODU. Use a 2mm flathead screwdriver to connect a dual copper cable to this connector. Connect only the minus and plus leads and do not connect the ground. The mounting kit for the external two feet antenna is ordered and dispatched separately. Unpack the mounting kit and included accessories and assemble as follows. Please also consult the installation instructions found in the box. Insert the azimuth adjustment bolt and apply some of the included grease for friction free alignment. Connect the tilt antenna plate assembly by gently sliding the azimuth adjustment bolt into place. Use the azimuth lock bolts to secure the tilt antenna plate assembly. Insert the elevation adjustment bolt and again apply some of the included grease for friction free alignment. Connect the four mounting lock bolts that fit mounting poles of 2 to 4.5 inches in diameter. Rest the antenna on a protective surface. You may use the packing material for this purpose. Attach the mounting kit to the antenna by gently sliding the elevation adjustment bolts into place. Center the azimuth and elevation adjustment lock bolts at the middle of the scale and unlock them to allow free movement during alignment. Depending on the specific ether hole radio being installed, the outdoor unit may arrive with a smooth waveguide adapter and a pre-assembled metallic plate, in which case please follow the instructions in step 3A. Alternatively, the outdoor unit may arrive with a threaded waveguide adapter and a metal plate packed in a separate box. In this case, the outdoor unit and metallic plate must be assembled together on site as is demonstrated in step 3B. Unpack the ODU and remove the protective cap. Remove the protective tape on the antenna feed. For installations using the two feet antenna, the metal adapter plate must be attached to the outdoor unit. Take it out of the box and secure it to the outdoor unit using the supplied Phillips head screws. The three tall screws go on the outer perimeter while the three short ones go next to the feeder. Install the ODU in the required polarization this is clearly marked with V and H. Attach the ODU to the antenna and tighten the four locking bolts using an 8mm Allen key. Here we demonstrate attaching the ODU in the vertical polarization. For horizontal polarization, the ODU should be attached as shown.
Mount the antenna on the pole. At this point, the ODU should be pointing roughly in the direction of the remote ODU. Perform a line of sight visual check to confirm this. To align the antenna, use a 13mm open end wrench or a flexible hex socket driver. Use a voltmeter for antenna alignment. Once the expected receive level is achieved, within plus or minus 4dB, lock the elevation and azimuth lock bolts. Use a voltmeter to verify that the received signal level has not changed after locking all the bolts. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit our website.